Hi and welcome to the second part of the videos looking at the Henglong Atlantic yacht. If you saw the first video I did some unboxing and I had a quick look to see what it is that I thought that I wanted to do and in this second video what we're going to be doing is actually doing the upgrade itself. There will be a third video and that will be a running video on the local lake. I'm breaking this video down into six parts. So this first part here is really going to be an overview of the upgrade before I do it. The second part will be the removal of the stock RC and any other parts that I want to take out. The third part will be soldering the connections because there'll be quite a bit of soldering to be done. And then we'll move on to the fourth part which is installing the upgraded receiver and speed controllers and then programming the RC transmitter. I am using a Spectrum DX4S. Um, I expect that this would work with some other car transmitters. It would certainly work with any um, computer programmable aircraft transmitter. And then lastly, we'll be tweaking, making sure everything's running the right way, etc., and testing it in the bath. Now, I would warn you that this video is going to be in some detail. It is intended that people at all levels and experience of RC can actually use this video to make this modification. If you're already an experienced RCer, um, I dare say that you're going to either want to skip through this very quickly or just go straight to the third video, the running video on the lake when I've made it because I'll be putting a couple of minutes overview showing how I did the upgrade in that before I take the boat over to the lake and run it. Before we start, um, I think it's worth noting a general disclaimer with all of this. Um, once you start modifying RC toys, you're going to be invalidating warranties and that sort of thing. I think that's fairly obvious. The other thing that I would say is that using soldering arms and some of the other tools I'll be using can be dangerous if you're not careful and I would certainly recommend any of the younger viewers to maybe get some adult help where it's appropriate. Right, on to the overview of the upgrade that we're going to be doing. So the boat has got two motors and it's got two propellers on it and what you may notice if you look carefully here and I will just zoom in, what you may be able to notice is that these propellers whilst they look very similar to each other, they're actually opposites to each other, which, which means that um, th the um, propeller on this side, on the left side, is going to be spinning in this direction when the boat's going forward, and the propeller on this side is going to be traveling in this direction clockwise. The reason for that is that if the propellers were the same as each other, and they were both spinning in the same direction, the boat would actually move sideways. So these are two counteract each other and to keep the boat going straight. At the back here we've got what looks like a rudder and I could have fitted a servo to this to make it steer but to be quite honest given that I've got independent control on each of the two props there's not a great deal of point and this really is just to set the trim if the boat for whatever reason has a tendency to go one way or the other and what I have done with this is I've tightened up the screw at the top here to make it a little bit stiffer so that it'll only change position if it's actually moved. So for the upgrade um, we're going to be using four key components. So I have here two speed controllers and the ones which I'm using are the Emtronics Marine Viper 15 amp and I think that that's going to be more than adequate. So we've got two speed controllers. I'm, I'm going to be using the Spectrum SR2001 two channel sports surface receiver. That I think is going to be plenty for this. I only need two channels, one for each of the speed controllers. And the transmitter that I'm using is the Spectrum DX4S. All right, that takes us on to the first proper stage of the upgrade. The removal of the existing RC. So I'll just take the top off. There we go. 
And what I'm going to be wanting to do, I'll just unplug the battery. What I'm going to be wanting to do is I'm going to be wanting basically to remove this unit here, which is where all of the RC is. Right, there are two screws to be undone. One here at the front of the unit and the other one is at the back. But helpfully, Heng Long have supplied a hole in the hole here, which I feel I might want to block up with tape afterwards. And let's just get these undone. You don't have to undo the screws all the way, just enough that it comes loose. Probably won't be quite so easy to put it back on again. That's fine. And here we have the unit. It's still connected to the aerial over here. I'll just have a quick feel to see how I've just pulled that off. It's not going back on again, so I'm not worried about that. Right, so this so this unit is still very much connected to the boat. So we're connected to the on-off switch up here. No longer attached to the to the aerial and connected to the two motors. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop some wires and I'm going to chop everything fairly close to the existing unit because that's going to give me more wire. Battery connection. I'll probably reuse that. And then... each of the motor wires. Leaving these as long as possible because I'm going to be soldering bullet connectors to them fairly soon. The switch, for the time being I'll leave it there but I'm probably going to remove that. Again I'm going to leave plenty of wire in the boat. So that's this unit removed. I quite like the fact that this piece here screws on and I think it's going to be quite a good place to to put these speed controllers. I'm trying to keep the boat to a similar weight to what it was before, so I'll just go ahead and I'll take the radio control out. So I'll just take this out. Okay, so it all looks fairly simple. It looks like we've got a couple of solenoids here, which the radio control just switches on and off, so not entirely surprising. out the aerial wire. Yeah, I might keep these solenoids for future use. You never know, maybe on the model railway or something. For the next job, what I'm going to want to do is put Dean's connectors onto the two speed controllers, but I actually want both of the speed controllers going into one Dean's connector. The way that these work is you always have the female connector on the on the battery end and you have a male one on the speed controller end and the other thing which is really really important is the one which goes I'll just hold this here so you can see the one which goes horizontally across is always the positive and the one which is going in the same direction as the plug is always the negative with these speed controllers if you get it the wrong way around you do not get a second chance they they burn up and fry in about two or three seconds and you get a little puff of smoke coming out and that's the end of the speed controller i've only done it once in my time and that was a lesson and the key to this is having done it you check and you check again and when you plug the battery in before you switch it on, in fact before you even make the connection, you make sure that black is going to black and red is going to red. I cannot emphasise that strongly enough because it's quite an expensive mistake to make. I'm going to be doing these one wire at a time, so starting off with the black, I've got hundreds of Tamiya connectors around, so I'm going to cut this quite short, it's very unlikely. I will ever use that connector again. 
So we take the two black wires. Like so. Strip them. I tend to use one of these little devices to hold everything while I'm soldering it so that I don't burn myself. Get a piece of heat shrink. I'm not too worried about the colour because I can see what the colour the wires are. Tin the connector. Because these wires here are clearly quite quite short compared with the distance I think we're going to have in the boat, what I've done for now is I've created an extension lead using the piece of wire we chopped out of the boat and you'll be able to see that we've continued our positive to positive and we'll use the Tamiya plug for the time being. <clears throat> if, I d if I decide that I want to change that out, I'll just put another Deans at the end here, but whichever way, I was going to need an extension cable. I didn't particularly want to solder a wire connection for wires here. Right, so that's the soldering done for the speed controllers. The next piece of soldering to do will be inside the boat, where I'm going to be putting these bullet connectors and I actually took these off some old RC some some old RC motors which I had um, these do tend to swap around a little bit between, between my models quite a few of these lying around I'm sure they can be bought separately it's not necessary perhaps to to use bullet connectors to the to the motors because you could just chop these wires and solder them straight to it I quite like it this way because it enables me to do things like set the speed controllers without the motors connected. If the motors are spinning the opposite way to the way that I want them to go, it's just a matter of swapping the bullet plugs around rather than unsoldering everything. Right, so for the next job, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder these onto the ends of the wires inside the boat. Right, I thought it might be useful to show soldering just one of the wires from inside the boat. So um, I'm glad I left these wires quite long. And what I've done is I've actually turned the boat stand upside down because the boat sits quite nicely on its side in here. When I was when I was stripping the wire on these, I didn't have it in the stand. I just put the boat on my lap and carefully did it using 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 the pliers. That's all four of these bullet point, these bullet plugs done. And that's kind of ready. The next stage that we need to move on to now, apart from unplugging the soldering arm, is to get the radio control completely set up and tested before it goes in the boat. The first thing that I actually did was I programmed the mix into the into the transmitter. It's quite simple, but I think it's I think it's worth showing you briefly. So I'll just turn the I'll just turn the transmitter on. So everything is pretty well standard on this. I'm just going to move the camera so you can really see properly. Right, this is quite an important stage in all of this, so I've just turned the transmitter on and I'll take you through the settings. So I've I've named the model and um, I've bound the transmitter to the receiver. There's no point in me showing you that. What is interesting to see is that 
I've um, left all of the directions on the servos per standard and that seems to be okay. The interesting one is in the mixing and what I've done is I've put two mixes in and this is really the key to being able to drive the two motors independently off the, off the stick transmitter. So mix A, what I've done is I've got the master being steering, the slave being throttle and I've put in minus 100 minus 100 on the values so I just come out of that and in mix B I've got throttle as a master steering as the slave and the values in here are plus 100 plus 100 I won't go into the reasons for all of that, that would not be a good use of time in this video, but what I will do is I will show you, if I can find it, on the monitor what the effect of all of this is. So if I turn the steering wheel, you'll see that the steering and throttle go in opposite directions to each other. What that means is that if the boat was stationary and you just turned the steering wheel, the boat would kind of turn on the spot. One motor going forward, one motor going backwards. If I pull the throttle, you will see both of them moving up together. So that will be going forward. And if I push the full brake, you'll see them going to reverse. And if I was to go slightly forward, and use the steering you can see that we're going to get a variation on that which will allow you to steer as you're going along if you were to go full throttle <clears throat> and full steering you end up with one motor fully on and one motor fully off which is similar to how the stock setup is all the time so what I'm hoping is that I've got everything the right way around and it's going to work if not, I'm going to have to start reversing some of these and that's what I would do as part of the bath test towards the end of this video. Right, now the, now the next thing to do is to make sure that the speed controllers are properly centred and I won't go through here how it is that you calibrate them but you can check to see if they're calibrated and these were as they came out of the box. Now the next part is also quite important because we're going to be plugging two speed controllers into one receiver and each of these, these speed controllers has got battery elementary circuitry, basically it will power a servo but it's really important that two of them don't try and power the servo at the same time. So what you need to do is you need to remove the red wires from one of the speed controllers it doesn't matter which one but you need to do it from one and the way that I do that rather than cut anything because who knows what I might want this speed controller for in the future um, I actually lift up the little tab and the and on these the red wire is the centre wire I lift up the little tab on the plug like so without breaking it off and then the red wire will come out and then what I do is I just get a piece of heat shrink pop it over the top of the wire so that it can't touch anything I'll just chop that off that's it That's easy enough to cut off afterwards should I ever want to, but if you, if you, if you, if you don't do that, I think it can be very bad for the, for the components. So what we should have now, and I'm going to plug the second one into the steering channel, is we should have two speed controllers being controlled on the throttle channel and the steering channel and we should be ready now to install it into the boat and see what happens. Now, if you remember from the start of the video, we, we kept this case 
that the electronics were mounted in and I'm going to use that to mount the various electronic components onto. Something which I have found to be quite a good trick is um, I use um, isopropanol alcohol, well, this is like the 99% stuff, and I always clean off plastic surfaces before I stick anything onto them to remove any mould release agent and that usually ensures for me good adhesion so cleaning the, cleaning the back of the receiver and the speed controllers with this if you just blow it it evaporates anyway but I found that this makes a huge difference and things really stick properly unless I do this and I like to use my 3M double sided foam tape, I think it's the exterior variety, seems to be the best thing for sticking things down and so what we're going to want to do is we're, we're, want to, we're going to want to stick these three components onto there just like that so First of all, the receiver. By sticking everything onto this mounting plate, it means that I can easily get things in and out of the boat should I ever want to. You only really need one piece of tape for each thing. there so I'm going to want the aerials sort of sticking up as much as possible as long as the aerials above the water line which it always will be in this boat um, it will be fine. So we stick the receiver there. One speed controller. I won't actually have them touching. And then the other speed controller. I've just left a little gap between them so that we don't get any interference from vibration. They're pretty central because I don't want to throw the balance of the boat off either. In fact, I'll just move that one across so that they're identically spaced because I know that boats can be a bit sensitive to where the weight is distributed. So that's that. And the next stage, put the base back on it. And screw these into the boat. A little bit fiddly to align but I've managed to do that and then solidly in place, it's not going to be going anywhere, we shouldn't suffer too much of the vibration either. We've got the two switches here which I'll come to in a few minutes time. Right, I think it's time to have a go and see what happens. So in the first place what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the motors on the right as you're looking at it to the speed controller on the right. I'm 
going to put yellow to the positive on the motor and negative the black wire for the motor into the blue wire here and then on the other side I'm going to put the I'm going to do the same thing. So the red wire to the to the yellow cable out of the speed controller and the back black one to the to the to the to the blue one. And when you're doing this, rather than try and work it all out, sometimes it's easier just to put it in and see what happens. So Let's see what's going to happen. So I'll put the battery in. That's in, that's easy enough to do by feel. And I can plug the battery into the two speed controllers, like so. Both of them have come on. Switch those off for a moment. And turn the transmitter on. Turn the boat on. And let's see what happens. Right, so this is the big moment of truth. So, if I pull on the throttle... I'm glad to see the propellers going opposite directions and that is definitely going forward and that is definitely moving the boat forward as well. So that seems to be the, the right way down. If I move the steering wheel to the right, I would I would hope that this one spun. But it doesn't. And if I move it to the other side the other one but actually that's telling me that I've got the mixing right what it's telling me though also is that the wrong speed controller is controlling the wrong motor so that's a really easy switch for me to make so I'll just quickly change it so that the right hand speed controller is controlling the left hand motor and vice versa let's take a second Right, having just switched those round, time for another test just to make sure. So when we want the boat to go to the right, I turn the steering wheel to the right and the left motor drives. Similarly, if I want it to go to the left and I steer left, the other motor goes, both wheels will go forward. If I push reverse, it goes backwards and we've got anything in between so I think from that point of view I think that we've got success so far it might surprise you but the next thing that I want to do is I actually want to mount these switches in a similar place to where the existing one is and that's to make it easy to turn the boat on and off and to know if it's on or off because you need to switch both speed controllers off in order to not be draining any battery and one of the good things about where they've got the existing switch is you don't have to lift the whole canopy off because it can be fiddly um, trying to hook these these parts underneath here it's, it's quite nice if you can just lift up the body get your finger in and turn it on and off so I'm going to go and do that I'm going to use the existing slot and then I'm going to cut another one for the for the for the for the other side. If you if you look there are a series of ribs, strengthening ribs along this top part of the canopy and if you end up putting a switch exactly in one of those then the canopy won't go down. It's the sort of thing you need to think about all the time. So Right, 
so that's not going anywhere. I think that gives us a reasonably neat job. They're both off. I'm actually going to use the pen here to highlight on and off. Because when you're when you're at the waterside and you're all in a rush and you're about to go home, it's quite useful to have these things clearly labelled. And then so rule off. And it's the moment of truth to see if the canopy still fits on there. And it does seem to and importantly if I undo the top here I can lift the canopy up and I can still turn it on and off without having to take the whole canopy off good so that's basically the mod done the next thing to do is to give it a quick test in the bath and see if it works Right, the final part of this video is the all important bath test. Switch on the transmitter. Turn on the boat. Thank you for watching.